The form and progress bar components in this React app are sharing state from a form context provider. Unfortunately, anytime I add input to the form, not only does the form render, but the progress bar renders also. We're going to fix this by applying the use memo hook in a way that you may have never considered. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're learning about an unexpected use of the React Use Memo hook. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Our starter code today is the completed code from my React form progress bar tutorial, and I'm going to link to that in the description so you can go to that GitHub repo and clone it or download it if you want to. Right now, I'll just open up the package JSON and let's change this name from React Form Progress Bar to React Form Optimization. And that's what we'll go ahead and call this one today. Now let's go into the source directory over here to the left from the starter code. Let's look at the app.js. We are providing our data, our global state, with the form provider here. Now there could be other parts to an app that are not receiving this data, but the progress bar and the form are, so we've wrapped it. Notice we don't have any state we're passing down as props. And then for this context, of course it's in the context directory, it's our form context, what I did was create a custom hook called use form context. So normally when we use a context, a data provider, we would import the use context hook and the form context or whatever we named the context. And then we use those in a component like this. Well, if you create a custom hook, you can just do this once and return the use context hook with form context. And then you can just use your custom hook everywhere. So then you only have the one import and you can use it easily without some of that extra code to write. So that's what I usually do with context, just create a custom hook like that. So now let's go ahead and look at our progress bar component. And you can see we're using that use form context hook right here. And we're only pulling in the page and the title from the context, but that is tied to some other data that our forms need as well. So it's all inside of that one context. Now the problem we have is we're still rendering the progress bar every time we render any one of the form pages and we want to prevent that. Normally what we would do if we were receiving props instead of using a context is we would pull out our react.memo and memoize the component and then just ensure what we were passing, say the page and the title, if they came in as props, have referential equality so we could memoize that component and it would not change every time. Well, that's a great strategy, but we can't do it here because we're not passing in props. We're using a form context. Now this question has come up in the past and the React team was asked about that. So on GitHub, if we look, and I'll go ahead and make this the full screen now, in the past they were asked about preventing re-renders with react.memo and the use context hook. Well, that doesn't really work. I mean, they had the kind of the right idea when they asked the question, but that doesn't work. However, Dan Abramov from the React team replied and gave three different options. Our first option would be to split context that don't change together. Now, let me pull this back to the right. I'll go ahead and hide the file tree over here on the left. Now, our context, well, I guess let me show the file tree and get the app.js back up. Now, I'll hide the file tree. Our context is wrapped around our progress bar and our form. So if we were to split a context out, if our form wasn't relying on the page or the title information like we're passing into the progress bar, we could just have two separate providers and that would work. That would be option number one. Option number two was to split a component in two and then put memo in between, which memo is react.memo if you know it that way. Essentially what you could do would be have the progress bar nested in the form and then you could get all of the data there. Then you could pass the page and the title to the progress bar as props. That would work. Or we could make a parent component that receives that data and then once again pass what we need in the progress bar as props and then we could use react.memo to memoize that component. However, what we're going to use today is option number three that I found very interesting, and that is to apply the use memo hook. Notice here they are returning use memo, and it includes 
all of the rendering logic here as well. So let's apply that and see how it works and how it could fix our issue of rendering the progress bar every time we change the input in the form. So now I'm going to drag Visual Studio Code back to the full screen. I'll go ahead and show the file tree. Let's go to that progress bar component once again. And at the top, we need to import that use memo hook. So we'll say import use memo, and that comes from React. There we go. Once we've got that, we want to bring in the page and the title data from the form context. And then we want to return our use memo hook right away. So let's go ahead and return, and then we'll have use memo. And of course it has a function. And then inside that function is where we can put everything else. And of course use memo will need a return as well. So let's go ahead and copy in everything we're going to use. Oh, and of course use memo also has a dependency array that we will put some information into as well. As a matter of fact, we could do that right now. It's going to need the page and the title just like the component is receiving because everything else will be inside of use memo. So let's go ahead and cut the other calculations we were making. We were determining what an interval was, 100 divided by how many different pages we had on the form. Then we have a progress value. And then finally, we also have an array of steps that marks the steps at the top of that progress bar, step one, step two, and step three in this case. But then we also have a return statement for use memo, and that's going to be our JSX here. So I'll just bring this down and there's the return. We can go ahead and get rid of this note from the last tutorial that said, yes, we were going to update and optimize at that time. So now that we've applied use memo, you can see everything is inside of the use memo hook. Now, when the page or the title change, then of course it would generate a new return here. And we've got our return for the use memo hook right here. So let's go ahead and save that. Now this won't work yet and I'll tell you why. We want it to generate something new every time the page changes, but not when the title changes because the problem we're having and the reason the progress bar is re-rendering is the title is an object. And every time the state is changing in the context, this object changes too. To further demonstrate this, I'm going to put a console statement right here at the top of our use memo. And we'll just log render, the word render, to the console. And what will happen is if it generates something new, in other words, if it's not providing the memoized value, we'll see this log to the console. And right now, that's exactly what we expect. So let me go ahead and pull this to the left and I'll go ahead and hide the file tree with control B, control back tick to open the terminal, type npm start to go ahead and start the React app. And we should see it start in a new tab over here on the right. And it's loading right now. I'm going to go ahead and drag this to the full screen as well. Okay, we've got our form up. Now let me open the dev tools. And we've got two renders because I'm in strict mode. And so it went ahead and mounted twice. Let me go ahead and reload and we should see that again. Yep, two renders, so that's what's expected. Now, if I type into the form, we should see a render still for every letter I type. And that's exactly what we see. That's because we do not currently have referential equality. When I talk about referential equality, like the title being an object, what I'm talking about is an object or an array. I guess that would be an array. Here, I need curly braces just an empty object even, is not equal to an empty object. You can see when I type that, it's false. It looks equal to us, but I'm talking about referential equality, and that means it's referencing a point in memory. Strings aren't like this. So if I use my name as a string, I need single quotes, there we go. And if I ask if it's equal to Dave, that's true, that's primitive data, but not when the data is an object type, and that applies to functions, arrays, and objects, for example. So what we need is that referential equality. Let me close that. I'll drag this back to the left, close the terminal for now, drag Visual Studio over, and what we can do is go back to our context in the context directory, look at this title object. Now, it's being recreated every time because it's inside of the component, and then we're updating the state here too. You can see we have state with billing and shipping. Those are all of our inputs. So every time this component runs, this form provider, 
it creates a new title. Now we could wrap this in use memo. That would be a good use of use memo for referential equality. But also if you've used a reducer, oftentimes you see reducers outside of a component and they can still be accessed through the lexical scope. So our form provider could still access the title. We could do that. We could even create this title object in a separate file and then import it. And that would also work. That would be much like placing it outside of the component. So I'm just going to highlight it, do control X and put it right above the component here. And if you prefer, you could leave it in the component and wrap it in use memo, but that's a little more costly. So I'm just going to do that. And this would have the same effect as if I had this title object in a separate file and imported it. Hey, okay, now that it's created here, it is not recreated every time the form provider component runs. So now when we go back and check, we should not have that same problem that we did earlier. So let's drag this back over. Now we're at full screen again. I'm going to open DevTools. I'll clear out the console. Now let me delete my name. And that should have rendered right there as well. So now I'll type my name. Notice it still didn't render here in the console. And that's because we now have that referential equality. So use memo is providing a memoized result. Now I will say if you go into profiler and you start recording a profile, you can do that with React DevTools. What will happen is you will see that it says this is still rendering on every change in an input but it would be very quick. So just to clarify what is happening there is our component does run, but it is providing a memoized result. So it's not quite the same as using React Memo, but it is really the same thing as far as the benefits of optimization because we are returning a memoized result here. So I'll go ahead and delete that console log that says render out of there. But other than that, this is the way we want the code. So all in all, this is a use of use memo that you may have not considered in the past. Now, before I complete this tutorial, I had promised in the last tutorial where the progress bar was created that I would come back in the next tutorial and optimize the context and the form overall. And that's what we need to do. We've already moved the title out instead of using use memo. So now it does have referential equality because it's only created this one time. It's accessed by the form provider through lexical scope, just grabbing it outside of the component. Okay, after that, let's look at some other things. One thing to do is look at this handle change. Some would consider putting this inside of use callback. I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to highlight the reason why quickly, and I'll leave a link to not only this post in GitHub that we talked about earlier from Dan Abramov, but also this article, it's a blog article by Kent C. Dodds about when to use memo and when to use callback. And he really talks about how expensive use memo and use callback can be and why we don't want to apply them everywhere and all the time. As an example here, he says, why is use callback worse than the example he gave? But as we scroll down, he talks about the only reasons you would want to use those. And he gives two main reasons. One is referential equality. We've already talked about that. The other is computationally expensive calculations. Well, our handle submit is not expensive. And this would really apply more to use memo because we would want the result of that calculation. Use callback just memoizes the definition of a function. So it's not sending a new function every time. And that comes back to referential equality. So I just wanted to highlight this and I'll leave a link to that blog post as well. But that is the reason that I don't wrap every function I create inside of use callback. Handle change is being passed to every page of our form. So if we look at billing, handle change is being passed, but the data is also being passed. Now, if we were trying to send in everything that wasn't changed, we would wrap this say and use callback for referential equality, but we're only passing in the data here because it needs to be represented in the form and it does change every time it's being passed in. So it really wouldn't make any sense to provide that optimization for handle change anyway. Okay, back in form context now, let's look at what else we can change. And we can optimize this. I'm creating a can submit value here, and it's only used on the last page of the form. I'm going to press Alt Z, and then I'm also going to do Control B to hide the file tree. But what we can do right now, we had the definition of can submit, and it was getting the required inputs that are destructured here just above. 
And it was making sure there was something in each one of those inputs using the every method on the array and Boolean. And then it's also making sure we're on the last page. Well, what we can do is make, make sure we're on the last page before we do any of this other logic. And if we're not, there's no reason to do any of that computation. So we can just say if, and then we can make sure we're on the last page here. And if we're on the last page, then it's a good time to do the rest. But we are gonna have to change a couple of other things as well. So let me go ahead and wrap this in the curly braces. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's go ahead and try that again. Curly brace, there we go. I'll save just to get the formatting, but let's delete the const here because it's not a const because we need it defined outside of this block here. This if statement has its own block scope. We need to go ahead and create can submit outside of that so we can send it on. And I spelled that wrong, submit, there we go. And so it will be undefined essentially if it is not assigned this value. And that's okay because it would evaluate the same as false in the way that we're using it. So this just makes sure we're not doing any of this computation unless we're on that last page. That's the only place we have a submit button. Okay, moving on to the next optimization. We're looking at this can next page one, which means can we click next on page one and can next page two? Can we click next on the second page? And then of course we get to the final page and that's where we have submit instead. Well, we can make this much drier. Notice these are almost the same, but what we need to do is create a lookup object. So I'm going to create one called starter and it won't matter if this is created on every render it really will not hurt any of the optimization there. But for zero, I'm going to give it the value of bill. And then for one, I'm going to give it the value of ship. And that's all we need to optimize our can next page. So instead of having two of these, we're just going to have one. So let's change this now, and I'll have to make some changes anywhere this is used as well but it's only used further down in the context to make other calculations. So let's go ahead and delete the one because now we're just going to use can next page. And instead of starts with bill, we can use our starter object and we can pass in the page value. If it's on page one, the page value will be zero since the numbers start at zero. And then we need to change this where it says bill address two. Let's go ahead and make this a template literal and here, we'll once again, let's just delete this part, or let's put the curly brace there for our template literal where we can insert our value. It would be starter and page there as well. After that, we need to end our template literal with a backtick also. So now we can insert the word bill, and this will still be correct. Likewise, this will also insert the word ship where it needs to be inserted and everything else would be the same. So now we can go ahead and delete our can next page two, and we're only going to refer to can next page. It can calculate every time based on the page. Now the values below here, disable previous, disable next, those are to disable the buttons if need be. And so all we need to do here is delete the one afterwards, and we're going to refer to our can next page in either one of these possibilities. And really that's it. So we went ahead and did some cleanup here and this was to keep our code drier. Of course, dry is an acronym that says don't repeat yourself where we had two values that were being created with pretty much the same logic. So we just abstracted that with a lookup object and turned it into one value that we can use everywhere. Then this for can submit is really an order of operations consideration here. So we make sure we're on the last page before we do any of these operations. So just a couple of nice optimizations to throw in with what we already discussed about referential equality in our title object. And let's go ahead and save this context while I'm at it. And then of course, in the progress bar, we went ahead and applied use memo in a way that was recommended by the React team in a GitHub post. And it's an unusual use that you don't see that often, but when you're using a form context, it, or any type of context, it might come in handy when you can't split that context out. Remember, they did recommend splitting the context out into separate providers if possible. That would be your first step to look at. I hope this tutorial has helped you learn a little bit more about optimization in React. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, 
and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.